can find us on iTunes at Faith and Whatever. Also, Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Faith and Whatever. Uh, iTunes, already said Twitter. You can find uh, Faith, the letter in whatever. Be sure to follow us on there. We do a lot of uh, Q&A stuff with people we like to talk about. Uh, another interesting news story that I wanted to share with you guys today. Uh, Obama has been making headlines again. Uh, he's not making fun of the GOP candidates this time, but what he is doing and what he has done was he just recently, he had signed a bill that went into effect that was uh, barring the import of, I'm sorry, barring the import of goods produced by forced labor. And so essentially what he's been... Uh, Bad for cell phones. <laughs> and Nike and Adidas and basically every other conglomerate over here. Apple. So he has what has been called uh, by this article from Raw Story. Dot com. He's throwing the weight of the U.S. market into the fight against global slavery. So shipments derived from slavery from fish to electronics and coca will be kept out of the country under this new law that closes a legal loophole that allowed the import of goods derived from forced labor if the U.S. demand exceeds domestic production, officials said. So this measure of closing the loophole from the Tariff Act of 1930 was included in a wider trade enforcement bill, which Obama signed into law. So let me give some context here. So when I was young, one of my favorite game consoles was the PlayStation 2. Uh, loved PlayStation 2. Sure. Owned one, played a lot of PlayStation 2 games. But you I couldn't have been that young because I was like 14 when the PS2 came out. I was like high school age. Yeah, okay. So, you know, I'm much older than high school age now. But what I found out after the fact, not too long after the fact, was there was, um, for the main chip of the PlayStation, the Emotion chip it was called, it required some kind of ore, some kind of metal that was only really predominantly found in the Congo. Mm. And the mines that to dig out this metal from the Congo was mostly filled with children uh, oh. working the mines to get the metal yeah. to sell internationally to Sony, uh, probably a couple of hands between them, and uh, ultimately making it into PlayStation 2s, at least like the most of them. And, and so essentially, this thing that I loved as a young person was... Um, was released on the backs of of the slave labor of children in Congo, um, so yeah, I mean this this is a very important a very important development in um, sort of international economy and trade and what we demand uh, the fairness we demand from other countries to to live up to ethical treatment of people. Yeah, yeah and I mean we had the same I had the same dilemma uh, when we did our church right did a harvest festival earlier or obviously on halloween last year and uh where we had candy and i was just like super i mean personally like nervous about the idea of saying do i buy things like reese's or do i buy things like hershey's chocolate where there are i mean where it's known and it's noted that there has been right kind of like this forced labor or this unfair labor however you want to call it uh and uh, you know, because fair trade chocolate is cool to buy. It's it's just super expensive, you know, right. at this point. So when you're having that type of conversation, like, what do you do about that? I mean, other than just shell out more money. And so what will this mean for, by the way, fair trade companies who kind of make a business on, on the ethics, yeah, on the ethics. But if all the major companies now have to be ethical, does that ruin their part of the market now? I don't know. I mean, it doesn't. I'm not really sure if this is not all, it, fair trade's not only about this issue, but it's. Yeah, that's right. That's a good point. I mean, it's part, but it's certainly point. part of the identity, though. Right. It's a well, core part. And I think that will stay in some sense. Because what this sounds like is, is it sounds like there was an open slave trade market for some of these items um, because of this loophole where if uh, if the demand for this product that's made in our country, let's say I'm another country like the Congo, Republic of Congo, if it uh, so um, if the demand exceeds what we can produce domestically, then we can use slave trade labor. It sounds like the, what it was saying. Yeah, that was the loophole. That so it sounds closed. like it's stopping that, but I mean, I'm not sure. One, I don't know how enforceable that is. What would be our guidelines? How would they prove that and check that? Where it sounds like something that's certified fair trade probably has some kind of inspection. But it sounds like this bill is just ending that, which is a great thing to end, but it's probably not going to stop illegal 
black market right. secretive slave trade being exactly. made in products. Yeah, and I wanted, Chris, I wanted to ask you this question specifically because I know that where we grew up in the Philippines and things like that, I've had conversations with mom and dad about the people who did work in factories over there and like for the long hours and, mm -hmm. you know, the little pay. And their attitude towards it was probably a little bit different than ours where they said, hey, look, you know, you guys may not think that this is the best, but this is opportunity for us to need better money. to be working. Yeah, right to have money to feed our families. Well, India so had a, India had a big problem where they outlawed child labor, and uh, it turned out that for a lot of families, child labor was the or their children working was the only of income. source of income they had. And so, simply outlawing child labor didn't actually help the families who depended on it. Now you have homeless. Now you have a bunch of homeless people. Yeah. Who can't even afford to live anywhere. So it, there's, it's there's definitely always complex. A few decades of, of like right. painful adjustment and trying to even things out and and so I think if you just attack one side of the problem without considering all the other the aspects fullness, of it, yeah, it looks good on paper, right? But what's the actual value of it? Right. So that's what that was my thought there. How do we, uh, especially I guess for I want to apply this just in a quick idea of terms of a reaction. How do we apply this type of thinking? to how we run our ministry and not just like collective as pastors, but also our personal ministry as Christians. What do we do in terms of the way that we shop or we buy our clothes? I mean, yeah. all those things, because to be fair, pretty much every product you use probably has some type of unethical thing attached to it. Unless well, it's yeah, well, or potentially. Is, yeah. Yeah. I mean, more, more likely than not likely, I would be willing Michael, to say. Bro. The free the free market yeah. already has the ability to to fix these things, but it requires the populace to use their power. And what it is is generally unethical. The unethical background of some products comes out of the desire of the corporation to lower the price as much as possible, right? Cutting corners to in order that people who only want the cheapest products will buy that product. But if the people decide to spend the money it takes to have ethical products, corporations will then follow that trend. Right. So, so shouldn't right. we be leading the charge in terms of the exactly. things that we buy? Exactly. Uh, it's, up, it's up to the consumer to, to purchase from ethical brands and pay more for it and maybe have less fun stuff. And uh, <laughs> and for your hobbies, maybe to be depleted a little. Not completely, right. but a little. Um and then, Unless your hobby is buying only unethically sourced things, <laughs> yeah. then you're kind of screwed. And then what will happen? Then is you're a terrible person and probably need a new hobby. And then the market will react to that trend. And places like Walmart, where we'd like people to maybe make more money, they will start paying their people more money in order to gain the consumer back. Yeah. Right. 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 And they'll be able to afford to pay their people more money because we will be willing to spend a little more money in their stores. Correct. Which is what they need to be able to then turn it around and make it a payment to their employees. Or what they say they need, anyway. So, like, uh, well, I'll, 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 I'll give an example of this, and I thought it was kind of interesting. So, at my church now, uh, we sell, we set up a huge stand um, after service on specific Sundays and sell a whole plethora of fair trade products, uh, typically just coffee and chocolate, um, from, from uh, I don't know, the most common fair trade certification. You read, you'd recognize the logo that's plethora. on the coffee. And, and chocolate and things like that. And... Um, we almost do it as, as a mission outreach. So the, there was a Sunday where we were talking about the importance of doing it. They, they, we showed a video of a coffee grower um, made by this corporation, not made from my church, this coffee grower in South America, and the importance that the fair trade, um, this certification program did for him and his family. And so um, I guess at my church, they've taken a little bit of a stand in supporting that. Now, I don't think we could go another level. I don't think that that's necessarily the coffee that we even serve for free mm -hmm. on Sunday morning to a... Mm -hmm. To our guests and members might just be the cheapest, you know, stuff from Smart and Final. But I think we could go the next step. And we we could sell that. Um, fair I mean, we could give that that our coffee we serve should be the fair trade coffee to support yeah. that even more. We live in a free market system, and the in mostly the, free. Yeah, in in until the, Bernie gets elected. In the free market, <laughs> you know that burn, baby. In the free market, ethics is a two party system. It's the party of the consumerist and the corporate bodies right. that are selling to us. It's the consumerists that set the precedent of what we will accept. And then it's the corporate bodies that react to that. Right. We when, create the demand. When we set the precedent that we want the cheapest possible products, corporate companies just reacted to that and, and put did chemicals what it, in it. And did what Whatever it took takes. to make the cheapest right. product. When we said that's the primary goal, that's what they they made that the primary. But that's why goal. I always think it's unfair when people jump on bashing like Walmart and things like exactly. that. Exactly. It's right. like if they're only doing what you basically 
told them you wanted. Right. The, con- the consumer set the precedent of what is the primary mm-hmm. goal of the market. So if we want Walmart to do better by their employees, it's up to the consumers to first set that precedent. <laughs> That's why I appreciate Christian leaders like uh, Shane Claiborne type, where the guy just basically like makes his own clothes out of hemp. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of lives. It's just like, well, that's kind of like a John the Baptist prophet type thing. But <laughs> what an scene! Yeah, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty good. So, uh, Garrett, I think you do have a couple more news topics for us. So well, I'm I just have excited. some that um, are applicable, and I think it's really cool. Um, there's a kind of a church analogy to it that we can look at. So um, something that's been in the news, um, not probably not the local, I mean the, the international, even national news, is that uh, Starbucks has changed the rewards program. Speaking of ethical. Uh, has anyone used Starbucks rewards program? No, but I've, I've seen it. I've thought about it. I, my wife goes to Starbucks all the so time. So let me tell you, uh, how, it, let me tell you how it used to work, and let me tell you how it now works, and, let me, and I'll tell you uh, the kind of the different uh, target customer they're at. So it used to work every time you visited the store, um, you got one star. Okay. Um, after you get 30 stars, you become a gold member, which is kind of the only one worth joining. The gold, the green membership is just for signing up. Um, once you become a gold member, every 12... That was a good movie, gold member. Every... Uh, <laughs> was it? Uh, no. Every 12 I'm stars... I'm not sure about that. that every, every 12 stars you get is a free drink. Um, and any any drink that you want, a $8 blended frappa, whatever, is, is free. It's on the house. And you get a free drink on your birthday for being a gold member. So that was use the old system. Now gold the new system member. is you need a 125 stars to get a free drink, but you get um, two, two stars for every, I think a dollar for, a one star for every two dollars, I believe, um, is how it works. So this is kind of what, this is kind of what they're doing. So the old system benefited their, lo- their regular customers the most mm. because someone who goes in for a two or three dollar just small coffee every single morning after 12 drinks is going to get a free drink. And at a $2 coffee, uh, which is probably a small with no, nothing added, you know, every 24 bucks, you're getting a free $5 drink potentially. Mm. Uh, But for those people, for them buying their daily $2 coffee, for them to qualify for a drink, they're now going to have to spend, they have to go in 20, 25 times. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes, it's financially more logical, right? Because before, I mean, uh, theoretically, you could go in and buy uh, 12 very cheap drinks traded in for a very expensive drink, right? right. Whereas now, it's more directly related to the amount of money you spend, right. uh, which, from a business standpoint, that makes a lot of sense. I'm sure some of the fans of Starbucks are less Time happy to boycott Starbucks. Right. So for me, I, I kind of like the and new done. system because I'm, I'm such a... I'm such a deal hunter. The whole, whole reason why I join, I mean, I'm not a huge Starbucks fan. I'd rather go with the Pete's. Fair Trade coffee. Fair Trade Pete's. Um, right. Uh, but because I like deals, I couldn't pass up on, well, you know, I get a free drink every once in a while, and sometimes That's we'll you to contributing to the problem. Uh, <laughs> probably. So be- because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of... Bad. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, because I'm kind of cheap and I'd rather make my coffee at home, I, I'm never going to go into Starbucks and just buy a $2 drink every single day. That's like way too expensive, way too much money. So instead, my wife and I go... Every couple of weeks, and we buy two drinks and maybe twenty four dollars of coffee. <laughs> so my my bill is like seven bucks, eight bucks, you know. So if I'm getting one star, I was getting one star. I spend seven or eight bucks. Someone was getting one star and spending just a couple bucks. Mm. So now I'll get more stars for my eight dollars every couple of weeks, and so I might get there faster to a free drink. So mm. here's my analogy for the church, right? It's to me, it's kind of interesting because it's kind of like when we do s- service on Sunday morning. <laughs> there's two audiences. There's the stars. loyal congregation member then there's the two guests, stars you know right. and like <laughs> no stars <laughs> this is <loyalty> program. <laughs> that's what we usually call the the core group didn't the catholic the people church that try you this? know <laughs> come every time the door is open right right that's the core group often and then there's the people who come you guys whenever. realize we're talking about what led to like the reformation right no i don't know what you're talking never about never mind okay Okay, so what, what, not what, clear, what clearly thinking? not up to date. So yeah, so weigh in on history. that. So weigh in, you know, as a church, and let's just use Sunday morning. Let's pretend Sunday morning is our Starbucks store. Um, where's the focus, and where's the most? Who gives you the most return for your investment? Focusing the the service on Sunday morning for your guest who who might come and just hopefully want to come again, or the people who come loyal every single Sunday and want it 
specific way. Well, I, I do have a particular belief about this. Uh, Actually, not, I do too. I'm not, I'm not saying that... <laughs> way to I, pull out a religion topic out of this gear. That was really I'm not, good. I'm not saying that my belief is the only good one or anything like that. It's just it's the one I've bought into. I agree with you, and I'm not fighting against you this he hasn't week. said anything yet. But, well, my belief is that... Touche. Um, <laughs> the, the, the pastoral staff and the core group should work together to provide something to everybody else. I'm with you so far. So I, I'm not a big fan of the pastors trying to please the core group okay. i believe in trying to encourage that core group to to take on a commission with the pastoral staff to serve others right, right. and then as and 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 when those others join the core group they take on that mission of trying and i think that's a that's the model i i agree with there <laughs> yeah and and i'm sure there's other good arguable models but that to answer your question i don't think it's about pleasing the core group it's about getting the core group as part of the pastoral mission to serve right. others and i think i agree with that and i think josh would agree and i'd be really surprised if he disagrees with that i half agree uh-oh uh, dun, dun, dun. so i see the value in that and i i think essentially what you guys are saying in a different type of language is the understanding of uh, helping people realize that they're not just there to be like consumers of the Christian faith. And, and I agree with that part in, in whole. Uh, I also think that there's a value in understanding that the majority of people that attend church on Sundays are your core believers, as opposed to your right. reaching out stuff. So, uh, as far as, so when I think of like putting on a service, I'm thinking largely from the perspective of teaching there. So I'm always going to probably teach, uh, a little bit like 55% deeper than seeker, kind of thing so 55 to 45 yeah probably so i'm gonna try and be as balanced as i can because i want to do something that's going to be funny uh and you know authentic and able to be grasped but i'm also probably going to focus on a little bit more depth in that or i'm going to set aside a different week in my church schedule and program to where we can have something only for the core people and the idea of going like super deep there right. so treat it as a separate issue uh, and that might be kind of the, the here's middle a, ground. Here's the thing. I Here's what I've always wanted. I've never had it. I've never worked with a church that Come did Come work this. at my church. But here's what I've always <laughs> wanted. I've wanted the Sunday morning service to be worship only and not teaching material. Yeah, never mind. No and I church. want, and well, I've, <laughs> I've, I've never so seen So then you this. and I don't have a job is what we're yeah, saying. Give me an example. <laughs> even, even the hired staff doesn't get to change the habits of the church. What so does I'm, this look like? Tell me. When, it, so everything being uh, focused on God. Right, worshiping to God, doing when when the pastor gets up to preach, the focus goes to the laity, right? The pastor is speaking to the people, where I'd want everything in the Sunday morning to be speaking to God, yeah, and then to also have maybe uh, after that service, plenty of teaching opportunity, other parts of the week. There's, I'm not saying the church shouldn't do any of those things, but to have a core worship only. Sunday morning service. I, I think that's a false dichotomy. I, I mean, I think a I'm ser- just saying that's I, what I would prefer. Yeah, I mean, I, I think a sermon also classifies as worship to God. It's not in there. I, no, I think it is. I, I think when we talk about worship, there, I think it falls under that setting. It's not worshiping God. Yeah, I'm sure it is. It, it might be doing. We, it might be doing right by God. No, by teaching I think when we're people, purveying, but it's not directed at God. It's directed at the lady. No, but when you use your gifts for what you've been blessed with by the spirit and you're working that's certainly serving god and that's your worship your worship well, no, it's your serving it's serving but it's not a worship it's not directed at how god. is how is service different than worship your service is a worship is a reflection of your worship but your it's not a service god. to god it's a service to the lady on behalf of god maybe but i'm saying when i say directed to god i mean speaking to god like like that's who's being spoken to from beginning to end is that we are speaking to God in praise and in worship. It doesn't have to be only singing. There can be other things, other creative Yeah, but, formats, when, you're, but when your people are listening, they're also listening for God's voice through your words, right? And so I'm that's just saying a, that that's this is... A, this, I'm, I'm not against teaching material, but I just would... I would like to see a Sunday morning yeah, service I would, that's directly... I would disagree with you there. I mean, I, okay. I, I think the audience hearing is also hearing from God, and I think that is a form of worship, though. But that brings so in an it's interesting... it's a form of learning, which is g- important in the church, too. Which I would classify as worship. <laughs> Everything's worship to Josh. No, yeah, I, I mean, no, I, yeah. That's interesting that you bring up because you know you're you're looking at a service that would be very fairly unfamiliar for a visitor or a guest, mm-hmm. um, but that doesn't mean that it would be any less um, exciting and intriguing for them to participate in and to yeah. see and to, and to witness. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of it's kind of a difficult thing to wade through because imagine a church that's been focusing a lot on the, on the core group, and then all of a sudden start focusing on guests, but there's no guests. Like a lot of guests aren't really coming, right? And so you're 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 
you're 45% seeker and yet there's no seekers there. It's like, this yeah, transition I mean, period. it's a difficult time. Functionally, that just doesn't work in American culture is what is really the problem that we're butting up against because the majority of people that you're going to encounter, if they come and visit the church on Sunday, it's probably going to be the most likely time that you're going to get them because that's, that's what true. American yeah. culture is familiar with Sunday being church time. But also simultaneously, the reality exists that the majority of people who are coming are... Yeah, it could be 90, it could be, easily could be 90%. Yeah, yeah. But of course, you do have churches where 30% are guests every single Sunday, you know, so that it fits in there, it makes sense. So I think, uh, I think Starbucks is uh, onto something. <laughs> what's your last, what's your last news topic for okay. us? Okay, um, so the next one is uh, probably applicable to uh, an even smaller portion of people. So, um... Josh and myself uh, both have Disneyland passes, annual passes. You, you hate Disneyland, uh, which is fine. And when you have kids, uh, I hate it. You, you might still hate it. I will never take my children more. to Disneyland. That sounds like the worst so idea of self torture live, ever. Because I we live close kids. to Disneyland, that's a terrible that's idea. Sadomasochism to go, to go. Sadomasochism to go. Um, <laughs> we often talk about Disneyland with, with people around us, and they always talk about what? What do they always talk about Disneyland? It's uh, I don't know. Yeah. It sucks. The crowds. Oh yeah, the crowds are awful. Tuesday how afternoons are the is. only good times to go. Yeah. So it's always the crowds and how expensive it is. And so Disney just announced um, that they're going to be applying applying surge pricing now on their on their ticket prices. So depending on how busy of a not busy how prime of a day it is, they'll charge more or less. Yeah. That so makes sense. Crowd control by pr- pricing out the poor people. Well, well, actually, right. well, well, and the out of towners. Well, that, no, no, it's actually the opposite. See, Disney, the reason why they raise the prices on the passes is because um, so they make people their, like me. We're buying Disney them. on a day to day basis Correct. makes a lot of money on the vacationers, right? Because they come for a weekend or a yeah. week Spend and more. they don't just walk around the park. Pass holders they, don't buy hats and right. sweatshirts. And they buy all this stuff, but there were so many pass holders choking the park that right. it was turning vacationers away. Right. The reason they raise the price on pass holders Which is, is a great to idea. Is to shrink how many pass holders there are in a day to day basis. But they basis. didn't even raise right. it that much. I bought the SoCal Select. Point they did. And, no, no, this last year. I mean, it, I mean, I guess it went up a lot. Well, they, the they, they went up a lot the, the at SoCal, one point where it forced me out because it SoCal, used to be like three hundred dollars. Used to be ninety nine dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was like in two thousand though, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that was. <laughs> those were the days. Well, the three hundred dollar one came with the parking and oh, everything. Yeah. The SoCal. The oh, the deluxe. The SoCal yeah. Select is. Uh, for me and my wife, it's thirty-four dollars a month. So it's seventeen dollars a month. So you pay for right the ticket, and then that gives you like basically half. And then you can go Monday through Friday, and not at all in the summer, and then not any time like basically not the weekend, November one, all the most to crowded times, January anyway. one, yeah, which is great. Yeah. It's like I have no desire yeah. to be there. First of all, ever. But but Disneyland yeah. is awesome when it's empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it's empty. It is. It's a Great. little creepy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the reality is, is that like a children of the, the only way, film. and this is this is probably for the best. But the only way that they are trying to limit the amount of people coming is is charging more for the ticket. Either that, or they start closing the doors. At so they do times surge pricing like Uber come. does with its rides. But the interesting thing about the surge right? pricing is that it's it's ninety five dollars for the value days which right now a ticket to get in i think is 99 dollars. so it's four dollars cheaper on value days it's 105 dollars on it's regular like Tuesday days between nine and eleven so the, the, <laughs> the price has gone up six bucks for regular days and 119 dollars on peak days so it's a 26 dollar difference on busy days or which would get you like two bottles of water so, <laughs> so i i'm not really sure how many people are going to be deterred uh, on the expensive days, yeah. if it's only twenty six bucks, when you're going to Disneyland, you're only going to spend a ton of money anyway. Here's, I mean, here's the thought. Uh, from my experience, pass holders or adults, adults who really like Disneyland, they might have kids and college, but kids. it's the adults that really yeah. want it, right? I, I've always noticed that. Um, my wife was one of those people, right? I'm not buying passes she, for my kids. She got she got passes for the family when our daughters were like one and three. Like <laughs> when they, they were still when anything. they were still free to get know. in. <laughs> 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 so, Look at this great deal I got us, James. Right. So I always thought they should figure out what do so those adults. They're essentially they want dates. Right, yeah. they did, and they, they want adult. They want cheap. They did dates, that, which right. not really cheap, but it is once you buy it, you can go and not spend anything. Right, so I thought they should figure out what do the, the what do people who want the dates want, Booze. and throw that into California Adventure. They did that. That's it. Right? You're, you're exactly then, right. Yeah, and then the vacationers, what do they want? Throw that into when Disneyland. Was when was the last time you? And went? then make the passes for California Adventure way cheap, right? And everything we want from that experience be in there. When right. was when was the last time you went? 
Uh, Has it been several years? It's probably been several years. Yeah, because they uh, they have booze in DCA now, Disney's California Adventure. They've always had and it. Really? In DCA. Uh, for a long time, at least 10, 10 years. Yeah, it's been a while. Oh, okay. Well, maybe but see, I found I've, that... I found that like, not like carts everywhere, just like a couple restaurants. I always found no, that... But now they the have brewery. it in carts where you can like walk around yeah, with that's, them too. That's so true, I'm, yeah. I'm like, I have a bunch of friends who are getting passes to just go walk around... Disney why? why? It's so lost. expensive. It's <laughs> like eleven dollar <laughs> Bud Light. I don't know. But like the Pixar stuff in in California Adventure, awesome. that should be in Disneyland. Right? Yeah, for the kids and the vacationers. But I bet James gets a pass when Star Wars Land comes out. Yes, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I here's the James does Touché. not like. By the way, if you're watching this and wondering who we're talking about, day. we're talking about him. That's <laughs> he's just referring to himself in the third person. Yeah. I do not like Crowd crowded. Shows places and hot days and yeah. walking all day and waiting in line most of the day yeah so i i've i've always been kind of a, a it Scrooge used to be great to have a pass to these things it would be raining on a weekday and you would go yeah you go down there space and mountain nine times i'll tell you what did it show up and, and go my my wife got um uh passes to knott's berry farm mm-hmm. and our passes came with like three meals a day when you go wow and they're like 12 dollar meals Ooh. Wow, and that that, that I thought was awesome. Here, man. <laughs> just dropping the box. Like, now a lot of I've heard a lot of people it's are doing that. Like, Disneyland is yeah. getting too expensive. <laughs> I just asked um, uh, a coworker at church. They got passes to knots. I'm like, okay, well, Disneyland's are like five hundred to eight hundred dollars now. So like, how much is a knot pass? Like four hundred? It's like uh, one hundred and four dollars. Fifty bucks. Yeah. Like, like for an annual pass to knots. I mean, not totally different. But knots game. will also close more days than Disneyland will. Uh, they're closed more days. Yeah, it's closed on more single days, like random days in Just the year. Just completely closed. Yeah, and more and rides will be closed more frequently. And they usually knots. close earlier at night. Yeah, they close at like they six, do. right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. they follow seasons very closely. Yeah. Knots. Yeah, but so they're, they're open late for the Snoopy. October stuff, for example. Well, I think I just think so. The whole reason about this, I think it's funny people get so frustrated that the prices keep going. But I, unless you want uh, to be so crowded that you can barely do anything there, and yeah. they've I'm also not really sure th- what the best option. For did you your I tell you what? I want to check out. There's a water park that has opened up locally this year. It opened up in February. The indoor water park. But you can't go to it unless you sp- unless you're spending the night at their hotel. Right. And where is but that? But the a, hotel stays like four hundred dollars. It's about a mile south of for a, for a big room. The Harbor, room. The Harbor oh, Okay, okay. Forward. But I want to do that so bad because I love water parks. One of those cold days when it's like sixty three. <laughs> really? But it's indoor. You love it's water all parks, indoor. Yeah? I love water parks too. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Interesting. Another thing that they're I like taking my shirt off, showing <laughs> the ladies this hot body. <laughs> <laughs> Only people who are at the hotel are going to be there, so you don't have to worry about. <laughs> when I take my so shirt off. Gross. I, <laughs> Just when kidding. I take my shirt off, I shine like Moses' face. It's <laughs> so so bright that the Israelites were I scared. Transfigure. I transfigure. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was an, whiter than snow. <laughs> but another thing that they, sorry, I didn't mean to make the levels peak. If you were listening to that in your car, um, but another thing that they've done to actually choke out some of the locals is uh, you used to be able to park at uh, downtown Disney for three hours, right? That's right? So I would go, I would totally hit this up all the time, right? You just park in downtown Disney, eat at ESPN Zone real quick, like ten minutes or you know whatever, and then head in you, to the park. You needed the little validate, yeah. Validate. And then once I realized I could just go to the guest. Uh, the gift shop at ESPN Zone, and they didn't care. They would just, and then, you know, let me go. Right. It's free. And so now they only do like two hours, and you have to present receipts at all the restaurants to get the validation. So they, uh, to be fair, I, you know, dis- there's no way that I was doing that under Disney's nose, right? They were totally aware. So I give them thanks for allowing me to do that for so many years, but now they finally kind of stamped that out. So here my theory is that it's getting, it's, so how does it's getting to too crowded. Service? It does. This one doesn't apply. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> It's getting too crowded, and they need a, a third park in the mid, mid middle of the United States somewhere, like Disney Midwest. I Disney don't know. Kansas. Disney Kansas. <laughs> that would be a nice Super cheap that. Where <laughs> dreams go to die. <laughs> because it's it's just getting so crowded. There's so it's not enough land there. Sorry, Kansas. Uh, <laughs> we don't have any listeners in that part of the. Once country. Disney gets there, you'll be a lot better state. Um, <laughs> they just gotta alleviate like the Kansas crowd City somehow. or Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City, Kansas, or which one are we talking about? I don't know. Both. Both. Okay. Neither really. That's all I got. Okay, well, good. Uh, I love not being at Disneyland. Like, every day that I wake up and I'm not there, my life is better. Uh, my three-year-old loves it, and it's it's literally magical and to I go totally, I totally get it if you have a kid and you want to waste your time like that. Like, that's a good thing to do for the Not waste. Use your time like that. Like, it's a good thing to do for them. Uh, but I remember, like, when we were growing up, 
mom and dad never took us to Disneyland. It was just like mom and dad didn't exactly have the money to take us to Disneyland. Well, yeah, but it was just like I don't even. <laughs> but more so, it was like dad would just tell me like I don't want to take you to Disneyland. Like oh, now that you're an adult, you see why. Yeah, and it <laughs> totally makes sense. And I'm not going to put my kids or my really my marriage through that. I'm so I'm just <laughs> impressed that your marriage can handle that strain. We like it. And, I mean, if it's too crowded, we just leave. We go. Oh, it's kind of crowded, so let's. Let's get out of here. Man, Orange well, that's, County. That's so the beauty of having a pass. Is, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll go for an today. hour. I'll come back tomorrow. I do, oh. like, I do like doing that. So I, I will give Disneyland that. It is cool. Like in the afternoon, if I'm with my wife and we're hanging out, it's, let's go ride Space Mountain. Catch the I, parades. I actually, I hate the parades. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to disagree with you on everything today, but I just hate the, I, the parades. <laughs> the parades disagreeing with me and yeah. interrupting Garrett. That's been your theme today. Yeah, yeah. Parades <laughs> freak me out. That's all. Parades are great because everybody else is watching them. So then yeah, you jump on the red. Yeah. I hear yeah. the new parades are really great. They yeah, are. Pretty pretty cool. Cool. I will give them credit. They're they are cool. good. Yeah. Uh, but it, my favorite part actually is is actually standing in the line with my wife there because yeah. we get to talk and we get to hang out and catch up. So that well, is, we really do. We 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 try to go to Disneyland, Disney California Adventure as soon as possible because it's just so less crowded. You can yeah. You can walk around. You can. Uh, my daughter likes the Mater. Mater's Jam Junkyard so Jamboree. So good. It's Such like a, a nine ride. nine minute wait. On I think average time we've waited is. It's less than 10 minutes to go on that ride. What's your favorite uh, part of Disneyland? I know what mine is. You know what? Something that I really like is that even though I don't go there a lot, I like I'm gonna California Adventure. Now. I like kind of the wharf area, um, the whole kind of water back by Screaming California all the way up to like the restaurants that are on the wharf. It just Is I that kinda, where the water show is? Is yeah, that what you're talking is, about? Which is fair. And it's not very good. I just like it kind of transports me a little bit like yeah. to a realistic place, not fantasy land or tomorrow land, but to a place that, hey, we could be... At some cool wharf area in yeah. some my favorite town. my favorite thing is two related things Pirates of the Caribbean sure and the Blue Bayou I will where agree you with you on both of, of those I've not been that a long time that is my fa- I, okay I agree with you that is my favorite part right there nice that was our first I just like hanging out in the French Quarter and yeah because I've never been to New Orleans but I'd like to go maybe someday and yeah looks about like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> just be like, hey, I'm we've, going we've back got to a Disneyland. good friend Josh <laughs> a lot more people throwing up in the real one but <laughs> but, uh, but I like watching the musicians and yeah. We've got a good friend, Josh, and I would show you around if you ever wanted to visit. He lives. Uh, he lives in the. He lives on the block where all the Fat Tuesday stuff is goes on there. Like they live like a so mile yeah, from that. He I enjoys don't none like of it. crowds. Yeah. So no, no, no. But I mean, he lives there during like the off. Yeah. When it's in the off time, and he loves. If I was gonna go, that's when I would go. And fun fact: the guy who plays on the late night with Stephen Colbert, the guy who plays the piano, what is his name? Um, shoot, they're an excellent band. But he's from John Best. John Bass something. Uh, I'll look it up and put it in the link. But he's from uh, a family of musicians from yeah. New Orleans. And they are... Amazing. Oh, uh, stay music. human. Stay human. Yeah. And they are from there. And he's an amazing musician there. And you get some real talent in that area, man. Yeah. Super cool. Well, be sure to follow us on all forms of social media. And you can reach us at faithinwhatever at gmail.com. Find us in iTunes on the podcast there. Uh, the app, you can just type in Faith in Whatever to the search bar. Find us on YouTube, same way. Uh, We look forward to connecting with you and hearing from you again soon.